the first heavy band I was in was probably, well, I guess the first band I was in was called Global Scam. Um, and it was with this kid, Leroy Seafeld, who was like a, like a death metal kid, but also into like epitaph, no effects style punk and rancid and stuff. So it's kind of a weird mix of death metal and like punk. So it's kind of weird. But I'd say the first like real heavy band was Race Trader or Kill the Slave Master preceded Race Trader. That's how I got into Race Trader because Carl, the main Kill the Slave Master dude, played drums in Race Trader when they're a grind band and he didn't want to play drums anymore. So he brought me in. That was it. And that, that pretty much led to everything because the Race Trader dudes are Chicago. Pete is friends with all of them and was in bands with them just how I met Pete and that kind of led here. Joe was from Fall Boy was always considered his nickname was number one fan as introduced by Pete because he loved Kill the Slave Master at the time. I wouldn't call myself number one fan of Metallica because I feel like the whole point of that was that it was like a local band where you're you know the people in the band or something. Not that Joe was actually this kid who was always around. He just really loved Kill Slave Master, I guess. I don't know. So Earth Crisis, I would say, I was number one fan. Earth Crisis, I mean, still is one of my all-time favorite bands, but definitely at the time, it was like Metallica, Star Wars, and Earth Crisis were my favorite things, and the vegan straight edge, which is still true to, of all those things. <laughs> So I haven't really evolved much in my life. But, yeah, I love Earth Crisis. I filled in on a tour with Earth Crisis. Um, a lot of those guys have families and, and real jobs and stuff, so they have a hard time touring often. So at the time, they were getting, like, fill-in drummers and other people, like Jimmy from Sect, filled in a few times on bass or guitar or whatever. So... Yeah, I got to do a tour in 2012, I think, which is how I met Scott, which is half of what led to Sect. The first half was meeting Scott and then JD, who was in, like, Unholy and Another Victim and uh, Sana Sangre and stuff. And we were talking, the three of us were talking about doing, like, a vegan straight edge band. Uh, JD kind of got busy with other stuff, so then it was Scott and I and songs were being sent and ideas and there's just no time really to actually get together and meanwhile when i did the that tour the southern lord tour and met chris who's my favorite singer in hardcore um we at the end of that we were talking about he and i and our friend greg thomas who played in misery signals and He's in the band The End now, which is a great band. Uh, we were talking about doing something, like a vegan straight edge, black and thrash kind of thing. Um, Greg got busy with Misery Signals and all sorts of other stuff. Um, and ideas were kind of starting. But meanwhile, Scott got together with Jimmy and started writing stuff. And I guess that really started taking off. He was sending stuff. I loved it. It was a, exactly the kind of music I want to play. And we were looking for singers. Um, we actually tried Greg Benick out. And, you know, while he's one of the best dudes, great voice, it just didn't quite fit for, you know, something as thrashy and crusty and dark as this. Uh, then I remembered, you know, talking about doing something with Chris, and that was it. So the two ideas kind of got smashed together. We want to talk about recording sect sect recorded with kurt Ballou, um maybe in june beginning of the summer or july or something and on our second record sophomore record uh first with southern lord um and it's kind of interesting because those dudes are always writing and we don't always have a lot of time to to do much so somehow we've lucked into having a lot of time recently to do weekends of shows and to write new music and then eventually to record. There's kind of always this fear with me where I I commit to recording with Kurt or whatever. That was the priority for me. 
Um, and I just don't know if come the time I'll actually be able to do it, but luckily everything kind of worked out. And then, yeah, we recorded with Kurt and have a record coming out November 24th. I'd say No Cure for Death is, is pretty similar to the first sect. I think it kind of follows some of the paths that we started on that record a little more, especially working with Kurt, who is just, it's one of the best recording experiences I've ever had. And he just knows the sound so well and gets such amazing sounds on you know every instrument. Obviously, he's the master with HM2s and wall of sound and you know chaos so that was really cool um but i think it it kind of follows maybe some of the more grindy <clears throat> faster stuff a little more um but yeah I, I don't know it's i'm i'm so in it that i don't i can't it's an evolution for sure i think it's better a lot better that we're more comfortable with each other as musicians and stuff having toured and stuff um, so I think it's better, but I don't know. I can never compare. Vegan Reich as a kid was like a, a pretty huge thing for, you know, the vegan straight edge, vegan drug free movement or whatever. So Sean from Vegan Reich, who also owned or ran Uprising Records, put out the Race Trader LP and then later put out like before I was in Fall Out Boy, I was in a band, Project Rocket, kind of a similar emo -y, indie rock, pop punk band. He put out a split with Project Rocket and Fall Out Boy and then put out the first Fall Out Boy record and the, a Project Rocket record, actually. Um, so, you know, we were friends and, and he was doing a Vegan Reich EP and Dan and I, who plays in Race Trader and I, filled in for a show. Um, and then he asked if I wanted to do the EP. I 